the leadership of the Nigerian Bar Association careless in the handling of issues concerning its constitution? Is the leadership really carried majority of the members along in the issues of the association? How best can the seeming cracks in the association be resolved? These are some of the issues we examine on this episode of Law Weekly. We talk to a former chairman of the largest branch of the NBA, Mr. Alex Muka. We also have the views of some lawyers on the workability of some major highlights of the Electoral Act, as recently amended by the Senate. Plus, our recap of some of the top legal stories in the news. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Shola Shieli. On the 30th of March 2017, a federal high court sitting in Abuja voided the amended 2015 constitution of the Nigerian Bar Association. Justice John Soho would deliver judgment in a suit brought by legal practitioner Olashuk Ojo against the incorporated trustees of the NBA held that the amended constitution breached sections 597 and 598 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAMA, especially as it relates to the registration of the amended constitution. He further held that the effect of the non-registration was to render it void pursuant to section 600 of CAMA. The NBA leadership immediately filed a notice of appeal and a stay of the execution of the judgment. Law Weekly reached out to the lawyer who initiated the action, Mr. Olashupo Ojo, but he was unavailable for comments on the issue. Mr. Ojo has, however, filed a counter affidavit against the NBA's motion to stay the execution of the judgment. While we await a resolution of all of these issues in court, the topic continues to elicit reactions from many legal practitioners. I spoke to a former chairman of the Lagos branch of the NBA, Mr. Alex Muka. Like some others, he believes that a political legal solution is what is needed. I felt that the suit should not have been instituted in the first place. It was filed. Um, I then felt that it should have been um, better handled in terms of the um, response from the NBA. Um, the issues were clear. Um, in terms of the claims or release before the court, um, uh, uh, we must admit that there was some merit to the legal position that um, the claimants put forward. And um, I felt that at the time that the NBA should have designed a strategy for dealing with it, that one would have been more forceful in terms of a response in court in addition to settlement moves. To your mind, what are the implications of this judgment? T to my mind, um, at the very minimum, in terms of the public image or perception of lawyers, um, we have created a situation where people would look at us as if um, we really do not know what we are doing. Now, beyond that, um, bear in mind that over the last um, um, one year, really, we've had some, um, let me use the word, dissipated resentment in the association in, um, arising from um, national and branch elections um, over the last one year. Um, there are several lawsuits in uh, court, um, there are several hard positions people have taken. Now, um, a lot of these, uh, the resentment and the lawsuits have to do with interpretations of some provisions of the 2015 um, MBA constitution, which was um, uh, the main thing in issue. In, in, in that lawsuit. I'm sure you are aware that a number of branches, my branch, the Lagos branch inclusive, will be holding elections in June this year. Now, the elections are supposed to be conducted pursuant to the 2015, um, the, pursuant to the branch by, uniform bylaws embedded in the 2015 NBA constitution. Um, as we speak, uh, I'm aware, for instance, that my branch has considered an election committee, uh, which is supposed to be bringing out guidelines for the kind of those elections, which will be in line with the with those bylaws. Um, so there's an open question now: um, what law would guide the branch elections that would happen um, in a few months' time? I hear you talk about some resentment, but how did we get to that stage? Is it that the leadership of the NBA did not carry some of its members along in the process of amending the constitution? First of all, let us agree that um, people generally are resistant to change. That's a given. Now, um, for lawyers, it's a bit uh, um, more cumbersome in the sense that by our very nature, um, we are um, very strongly opinionated. Um, so it's a given that um, if there is going to be a change in status quo, uh, perhaps the first people who would take 
a position of challenge would be lawyers. Uh, now, um, bear in mind that um, prior to the 2014 um, uh, constitutional amendment, there had been an attempt um, some two years uh, before that uh, to amend the 2009 MBA constitution. Um, I'm, I'm referring to uh, the attempts um, at the time when um, Mr. J.B. Daudu S.N. was president of the Bar, of, uh, the Bar Association. Um, now, at, at that time, it was um, piecemeal amendments. Um, uh, and members, uh, of course, uh, it was a long process. Because the process for amendment of the MBA constitution is quite, um, it's slightly cumbersome process. There's a lot of back and forth and consultations and all that. And it was not successful. Now, the 2015 amendments, uh, which were initiated um, under Mr. Osin Alige SCN were a take it or leave it. It was a ballpark amendment to the constitution. Yes, some provisions of the old constitution were retained, but there were quite a number of radical changes.